Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to Baloney Basketball. As you can see, I am here with a special guest. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself? My name Price, P-R-Y-C-E. Um, you know what I'm saying? I like basketball a lot, and I know like I'm way more knowledgeable than Gary right here. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> I, I don't know about that. I think we'll find out maybe in the trivia game at the very end. Um, but no, like, we got a lot of topics to discuss today. The first one, there are a few teams that are still undefeated in the NBA. The Chicago Bulls, my Chicago Bulls, the Golden State Warriors, and the Utah Jazz. So, Price, I know you got a lot of stuff going on over there. Uh, but the first thing I'll ask you is, of these three teams that are still undefeated, who do you think will end up as the best of these three teams? And will any of them be serious threats this season? Uh, Well, you know, the Jazz, the Jazz always get out of, like, deep in the playoffs. I would have to say the Jazz. Um, You know, Chicago. I, I think I got to see more out of Chicago since they, like, really a new team. They haven't made the playoffs since, what, 20, 2016, maybe? 2017, yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> Yeah, Jimmy. Oh yeah, Jimmy Butler. Yeah, um, and uh, J- Golden State. I feel like they're gonna be like the seventh seed because I don't know when play coming back, so they might be like a lower tier seed. So they might play a good team and they might get knocked out first. But it's definitely gonna be tough. It's definitely gonna be tough. Um, it just depends on about about injuries, all of that stuff. But as of right now, I have to say the Jazz. What you think? That- that's that's interesting. I, personally, I think of these three teams, the best team for the season, even though I'm a Bulls fan, I, I got to go with the Jazz. Um, I just think that they have the most well-rounded team. Right now, they're top five in offense and defense, just like how they were last season as a whole. Um, I'm kind of surprised that you didn't go high on the Warriors. I feel like a lot of people would have you know, bought into the Warriors immediately, like, oh, like now we got Steph, Clay's coming back soon. But yeah. – you don't really know when Clay coming back. We don't know. Like that's true. If we, have, we have a little month span. Like it could be like February to March or whatever. But we don't. Yeah, I can't. I can't really put the put them that high. You know. I will yeah, say. I, I will say though. I think all these teams will probably end up in the playoffs in some way. Um, hopefully, my Bulls can get a good seed. I mean, right now we're four zero. But uh, we're, what, were, what were you gonna say there? Oh, I was going to say, like, you know, I got Jazz. I got the Jazz, the Bulls, then Golden State. But I don't, I don't see Chicago really getting a good seed. They might get the six seed, might, maybe, perhaps. They might have to, they might be in the play in. I don't know. It is possible. I had them as fifth in my, uh, like, when I did my predictions a few weeks ago. I'm yeah. hoping we can get, like, an actual spot, like, above the play in, though. Like, that's my biggest thing. Um, yeah. But do you, you want to move on and we could talk about some of these superstars that are struggling right now in the NBA? Uh, you probably will have a lot to say about this. Um, yeah, I'm you know, talk about Dane, man. Yeah, like, obviously, we all know about the rule changes. Like, they're calling a lot less with the fouls. I think the main person that's getting targeted on social media right now is James Harden. But, of yeah, course, 18. yeah, he, he's struggling right now. Um, and then, of course, you said Dame. You also got Donovan Mitchell. Bradley Beal, these guys aren't really shooting that well. Um, I know Jalen Suggs is a rookie, but he's not playing that great himself. What do you think of these struggles, though, from these guys that are normally playing at an all-star level? Honestly, like, who's playing? Like, who do I expect the most out of? Uh, you, you could say that, yeah. Yeah, uh, well, I expect the most out of Dane. Like, yeah, because he's supposed to be, like, the leader, you know. Um, but I think he's shooting like I don't even know. He's shooting a horrible percentage from three. <laughs> like I just I just saw where he was shooting from for three, and it was like so bad. And he's supposed to be like one of the best shooters in the league. But uh, I'm looking at stats up right now. Yeah, he's averaging 17 percent from the field, and it's Damian Lillard, and he's averaging 17. Per- oh my bad, that's field goal three. He's averaging 17 percent from three. Yeah. <laughs> from the field and 17, 18 points. Um, but yeah, Dane, supposed to be the leader, the person, the, like, you know, the one to t- take them up there because we don't know where we're getting out of CJ every time. Um, Harden, I think Harden, I don't know. 
I think Harden, like, he, he's trying to get the team involved. He got KD, but he's definitely struggling. Um, I think I think if he's, he becomes more aggressive, then he would probably get those foul calls and go to the line. Um, but Bradley Bill, I don't know. I don't really know. Like, he, I think he should just be traded. Like, or he should win it because there's no way he thinks that they're winning the championship. Nobody wants to go to Washington. That's just first off. Like, who wants to play in Washington? <laughs> they free agents. Everyone leaves. Right. Um, Bradley Bill, like, he just averaged 30 last year. And uh, he won the scoring title the year before that. No other super, no other all star. I think, yeah, I think he should just want to leave. But yeah. Yeah, I, th- uh, I just think, like, like you said about Dame, he, he's probably the most surprising shooting that bad from three. Because uh, I mean, like, I'm, Donovan Mitchell actually shot really good last year from three as well. But when you think of Dame, like, you know, he's pulling from like the logo at a high clip, probably higher than anyone else in the league except maybe Curry. So like, yeah. that's an extreme class. Uh, but I think in terms of just performance right now, it's got to be Harden. Because, um, I mean, we've seen him put up astronomical type of scoring performances, scoring seasons. Mm-hmm. I mean, this guy averaged like 35 a game just two years ago. So I think that's the most surprising. And, yeah, like like you said, like he's getting people involved. Like he's got KD on his team, stuff like that. But at the same time, it just looks like – He's not being aggressive. I mean, you kind of said that. I think part of it is because the like, you know, he likes to create so much on the three point line and draw mm-hmm. those fouls before, but now like that's different. So it's going to take time for, you know, him to adjust to that. Um, I mean, would you say that's kind of fair? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And also, even though you can't stop Hardy, you can't guard James Hardy. I think that they're ready for everything that he's going to do. I think that they're prepared for those step backs. Even though, you, you, like I said, you can't stop him. Like, you can't guard him. He was, you can just try to get a good contest on him, you know. But, like, you can't guard him. So, <laughs> like, when he does these step backs, when he does all of these moves, I feel like for the last years, you know, he's, he's ha- added a couple of new moves to his bag, of course. But, like, his main thing has been those, through the legs, crossover, through the legs, crossover, step back, you know, step back. Everything is, like, is just a step back with him, I feel like, besides him driving in, of course. He doesn't really shoot from the mid-range, you know, so it's really like a three or a layup or a free throw line points. Um, but I think Harden, yeah, I just, yeah, I see I see Harden being, because Har- I think Harden's over Dan. You think Harden's over Dan or you got Dan? Right now, um, well, all all time I would take Harden over Dame, but I think right now I'm I'm probably going to lean toward Dame, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I just just feel like Dame, especially coming off what he did last year, the last few years he's been extremely efficient. He's been one of the best leaders in the league. You know, he – and people don't really value this, but I value loyalty as well, like – He's yeah. staying with Portland. He's trying to stick it out. He's optimistic, even though it seems like they have no chance in the world of winning a championship or like a very slim chance. But he didn't, you know, kind of quit on his team like Harden did. So yeah. I feel like that also comes in the equation as well. Um, but well, I, I don't know. Okay. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, like, with Dame and Bradley Bill, I feel like. Even though I think they're kind of like in the same boat here, like Dame, I feel like like even though every all the fans want Dame, please stay. Like you know, like the, really the Portland fans, but everybody that wants Dame to sit, stay, Dame wants to stay. But I feel like as a superstar, how old is he? Like thirty. He's like thirty-one, I think, or thirty-two, yeah. something like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, in his thirty, so he's like. Well, we said I said this about LeBron. He's getting out of his prime, but as a guard, I think I think uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, it's I don't know. Normally, normally he'd be out of his prime by now, or around like leaving at like thirty four, maybe thirty five. Uh, I think he should leave. I honestly do because we want we want to see him win a championship. Harden left. He's with the Nets. He has a good chance of winning that championship. But Dame, uh. I think Dame should leave, definitely. 
I mean, it'll take time to see whether or not, like, Chauncey Billups is the new head coach is going to actually be the adjustment. I mean, there's been some games where they played, like, really bad. Like, they got blown out by the Clippers, like, by 30 the other night. And then they also – Yeah, and, and then they also turn around and blow out the Suns. Uh, or they did that right before them. But, like, I don't know. We're going to have to see more games to figure out, like, what's going to happen with this Blazers team this year. Um, yeah. Right now, it's – like, yeah, I, I think it's too hard to judge uh, based on a few games. Um, what do you think about the Lakers? How do you feel about them? The Lakers? What What do you mean? Like their game yes, the other day or just no, in general? Like, like as a whole, like, you know, besides, you know, Alex Cruz goat, you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Undefeated while, you know, like <laughs> LeBron. When LeBron played without Alex you know what I'm saying? They he lost. That's really just for jokes, really. But like, what do you think about the Lakers? Because it seems seems like they don't really have their team like in a in like a whole. It's like it's like sometimes you see you see glimpses of what they can be, but then other times they're just playing like they playing like how Detroit should play or you know like a worse team should play. Yeah, I I feel like well, I mean. Like you said, there it seems like they're not completely together. I mean, just from the second game, I mean, guys like Howard and AD were going at it, like in the middle of the game. So I feel like there's a little bit of maybe internal conflict. See, it's different than a few years ago because I feel like guys like Rondo and Dwight Howard, those guys is, are like mystery cards. Like you don't know what you're going to get out of them. Like they could be completely motivated they could play like you know how they did in their prime for like a few nights if necessary but then yeah. like they could also just revert back to getting exposed by some of these other players like rondo in the playoffs last year he was awful for the clippers and then also in most of these situations i saw it with rondo on the bulls i mean it was horrible in dallas and then even he had some antics like in sacramento where he's just like a mystery card. He's just a weird guy. Same thing, mm -hmm. like I said, with Dwight Howard. They got a few of these guys. Even Melo can get a little bit like that, but not quite on the degree of those guys, I would say. Um, and then, of course, Russell Westbrook, too. So, like, and I don't know how – I mean, I will credit LeBron because he's been shooting the three-point shot really well so far this year. But I don't know if that's going to last for 82 games. And then him alongside Westbrook is going to be hard. Uh, that's what I think personally. Yeah, you think the uh, you think the Bucks making it further than the Lakers? The Bucks, um, probably. I th I think on my predictions I had them further. Now I don't know if that would mean that like I I don't know. I mean I think it just kind of depended on the matchups I had, but. They're both like kind of up there, I guess you could say that. Yeah. Um, but you you want to move on to talking about some of the rookies that have been killing it so far this year? Yeah. All right. So you can tell me like which rookie or multiple rookies have caught your eye so far, or have you like impressed you uh, so far in the season? Well, like I think I think they should Jalen Green should have been the number one pick. And even though so far he does seem kind of streaky, like, but that 30-point game, that 31-point game, who is he playing? Uh, I don't remember. I know I know they just played Boston recently, but I don't know if it was that game. No, it, yeah, it was Boston. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. okay. He said him half 40, and, yep, yeah. So I think um him meeting Jason's, I mean, uh, even though they lost, they did lose by like twenty, I think. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, I like I like Jalen Green, honestly. Even though like his jumping ability is insane, I know that his jumping ability is insane. He's a scorer. I think he's like, I think he's like the best scorer. He's gonna be the best scorer scorer of this generation, like as as like this class coming in. I know, no, well, Jason Tatum's in this class, too. And, like, this generation, and Devin Booker, and all of them. But, I don't know. 
I've been, been watching him since high school, so I do kind of have a bias. So, but I, I, uh, I think I got it. Uh, yeah, Devin Green. Devin Green's been nice. Um, K hasn't played. Uh, who else we got? Suggs. Suggs or Rick Andy? Yeah. He was drafted this year, yeah. Um, yeah, I think Suggs. I think Suggs. Uh, well, he's kind of playing. How I expect him to play. I expected him to play like, not like Trey Young, but like, you know how Trey Young started off a little a little slow? Yeah. And like started picking it up the second half of the season, like after the uh, All-Star break. I think Suggs uh, can do that. You know, being like a guard. The guards don't usually come in and start killing it, like automatically. It, there, there's been a couple throughout history. Like D-Rose, he came in and, you know. My guy. <laughs> Allen Iverson. There's been so many, uh, you know, yeah. But um, anybody else I can think of? Nah, I mean, here you go, you go. You go. Right, I right, think right. I think it's time as you talk. All right. Um, I mean, like you said, though, like Jalen Green, he's given glimpses of what he could potentially be one day. Like you said, he's been a little inconsistent so far. Um, I don't quite agree with you. I still think that Cade should have been the first pick, uh, but of course we haven't seen him play. So like, how are we supposed to know right now? Um, but what I saw from Cade, like in college is I thought him in college was so close to Markel Fultz in college and Markel Fultz in college. I mean, that guy was insane. Like he was crazy. So I, I thought he was like the closest thing I'd seen from a college prospect since D Rose. And you know how I feel about D-Rose, so, like, I was like, wow. Um, but anyways, the guys that have been playing so far, my rookie of the year favorite so far is Chris Duarte for the Pacers. He's been yeah. unreal. He's averaging, like, 20 a game. He's shooting great. He's a pretty good playmaker and pretty good with the ball, too, and he's also hit some timely shots for them so far this year. I know the Pacers have, like, a terrible record, but he's been one of their more clutch players. Uh, Evan Mobley has also been pretty uh, big. Josh Giddy, a little bit surprising for me. I wasn't very high on him when he got drafted. Yeah. But he, he's, he's been playing pretty good. And then also Scotty Barnes. He just looks like an athletic monster too, kind of like Jalen Green, but also, you know, more of an inside dominant type of player. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, any of those guys that I mentioned, like. You know who we forgot about? Who? <laughs> Davion Mitchell. That's right. Yeah, Davion Mitchell. He's been off night. He, he came in the league. They are tonight. If you're calling him off night. And he played good defense on Dame, Donovan yeah. Mitchell, Steph Curry. Yeah. I mean, like in the first week of basketball, having to stop all yeah. three of those guys. It's crazy. Oh, it's hard. Superstars. Yeah. Um. What about Jonathan Kuminga? He hasn't played yet, but I don't know if I quite believe. And I don't know if this is like the Warriors necessarily because they're such a big market, so many fans. I don't know if I believe in the hype of him to that extreme. I think he can be good, but I don't know if he's going to be like that, you know, next level guy. But I don't know what you think. Like, like, do you think they should like send him to the G League though? Um, I would for rehab, like when he gets back. Now, yeah. I mean, being a seventh overall pick, you're probably going to want that guy in your roster, like when he's able to play. So, I, I I think I'd only send him down like just to get his like footing back, and then once he's good, you know, bring him back to the team, see how he does. But I went if the Warriors are playing really well this year, even without him, I mean they're four zero right now. I wouldn't rush yeah. him back. So, I, I I wouldn't feel any um like any way toward like trying to make sure we need Jonathan Kaminga back for the playoffs if they're playing this well. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, you, you want to move on to our next topic, which is about our week one MVP pick. I don't know if you have an MVP pick, but I, I've seen a few guys have been playing pretty well. Uh, you want to go first? You want me to go first? Uh, you can go. I want to see if I agree with you. I want to see. All right. Well, I will name some people that I think were kind of close uh, that I don't have picked, 
Well, first of all, Miles Bridges has been insane, probably the most improved player uh, leader right now. Uh, Jokic has been great, but of course he did just get injured. We don't know how severe it is. Steph Curry, he's been playing insane. Kevin Durant has also been playing insane. It's just that his team hasn't quite gotten that much success so far. And then, of course, John Morant currently leading the league in points per game. I think that he deserves some recognition. You don't like that? I don't like Josh. I don't like Josh. Wow. All he right. is nice. He is nice. He is nice. But I don't like Josh. Because my friends like, because my friend, Zevion, his name is Zevion. He likes John Morant. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't like about him. That sounds like a hater, though, doesn't it? That, that it, like it kind of does, yeah. Yeah, it does, but uh, yeah. But and that's that's my bet. I got, I got some animosity towards him because he because he beat the Warriors. Like, oh. <laughs> he wasn't hitting nothing. Uh, he was not hitting anything against these other teams. But against the Warriors, he was just knocking them down, and that should be that should give me a reason I like him, honestly. But, uh, Maybe, yeah. yeah. Play style. Um, yeah. But my my yeah, person... Oh, wait. What were you going to say? Sorry. <laughs> oh, my bad, bro. I was going to say, like, I like Russ. So you would think I would like Josh? Yeah, that is, that is kind of weird. Um, but uh, my personal pick right now for MVP, and it probably won't last considering how their team is structured, but they could make the playoffs. And I think it is Carl... Anthony Towns. I mean, yeah. this guy is yeah. averaging 28, 8, 4. He's averaging like two and a half blocks, one and a half steals, shooting like 70% true shooting. Their team is 3 and 1. They just beat the Bucks the other day. They beat the Pelicans. And he's playing probably the best defense so far of his career. And I think they're going to be good enough to like have a chance where they could make the playoffs. Like, I don't think that's something that's far fetched. Anthony Edwards is playing great. D'Lo is back, and he's playing great. You still got Malik Beasley off the bench. So I, I think that they're kind of a sleeper team. I think so far Towns is the MVP front runner, and I don't think he's going to win it, but I think he's trying to make a statement this year because the last few years he's had injuries, and people have kind of like put him under the radar. But um, what do you what do you think? Uh, well, I didn't. I really, I didn't, like. I'm not gonna lie to you. I really haven't uh, looked really at the um, at uh, the Timberwolves. I uh, like cat. I used to like. I, I liked them, but then with is this I, more? Is this more hatred coming? <laughs> no, it's not hate. It's, really, it's not hate. It's not hate. It's, not hate. it's all love with cat. It's all love. I like cat. Uh, I like Anthony Davis. You know what I'm saying? I feel like they're even though they don't play the same. I think you know. As one of the bigs that can shoot, amazing defenders, rebounders, I think, yeah, I like Cat. I do honestly do like Cat a lot, but I haven't looked at him a lot, so I can I can really disagree with your statement. But I'll tell you, my statement is definitely Kevin Durant. He's averaging what thirty, ten, and five, like fifty five percent from the field. His three-point shooting is like 36, I think, 30, around there, 37, 36% from the field. Um, I do, like, I am a Kevin Durant fan, like, not, since I was younger. Like, I think I told you, <laughs> I was, like, younger. The first team I watched the Thunder. Like, that's so why I like Harden and Russ and KD. So, uh, he's, I know he, he leads the league in player efficiency, ready. Right? He's leading the league. Um, I think he's tied for first or like he's second in scoring. I think after the jaw dropped forty, that gave him the that put him above KD right there. Yeah, I think I don't know if they're tied, but I know I know Jaw's first, so it's either just him or like they're tied or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know it's those two. I know that those two are at the top though. Um, but yeah, I like uh, yeah. I'm gonna say KD. I know that's like that's like a casual statement. That's what. Everybody would say, you know, KD is the. I mean, yours was, uh, yours was kind of like the under. Like, you, like <laughs> that's not something people really see coming. Because I, I know a lot of people haven't really been watching the Timberwolves. Because that's not really like a team you would just go out there and watch. But yeah. I, li I like your pick. I like your pick. I'm going to start looking at Well, I feel like KD is kind of fair, too. I mean, the way that Harden's been playing, and like, you just look at the rest of their team, like, they're structured 
they were built for a three superstar team, you know, because exactly. they were supposed to be made for Kyrie Irving there too. Now he's not there. You know, they were supposed to be made with James Harden in the picture. And while he is there, like, people have been saying it's almost like he's not there because he's been playing so bad. So, really, it's like you have Kevin Durant out here. You don't have a rim protector. You don't have depth. You don't have another co-star, really, at this uh, point until Harden figures it out or Kyrie, you know, gets the vaccine or something. So, I I think it's fair. I think the only thing that made me not pick Kevin Durant is just the fact that they're, like, two and three right now. Um, And that might be kind of stupid at this point in the season, but I'm, I'm just trying to, like, balance it out for an 82-game season because that's, like, a 40% win percentage. But uh, w- what were you saying there? Sorry. Yeah, like, as an MVP, you, got, you do have to look at the record. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can't put KD there. Then, you know, I gotta think about it because as the MVP, you're supposed to, you know, at least have the wins unless you have that season rest day. I mean, to, to be fair, though, uh, Curry did get the second most first place votes last year, and their team didn't miss the playoffs. So I, I guess you yeah. could think of it like that. Yeah, but, well, just, oh, yeah. No, what were you going to say? I was going to say, like, because, you know, I think because Curry was just like, like, Curry was just, I was crazy what he was doing. <laughs> K, KD isn't really doing anything crazy. You know, he's not really doing anything. Like, we don't expect out of him. Like, we expect him to do this. But since he just had that triple-double right there, you know, that 29, 15, and 12, uh, I know he's shooting 78% from the free throw line, though. Uh, that's very bad for KD. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll get Cat. Since I can't really disagree with you, I'll say Cat. I'll agree. Yeah, and I, th- I think naturally part of it has to do with, like, just the name game. Like, people will see James Harden on the roster, so they're like, oh, they should be better. But you can't really blame KD at this point uh, for that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, you want you want to hop into the trivia game now at the very end? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go, let's go trivia. All right. Let's have a I'll, I'll, I'll give you the rules. Here's how it works. So, right. each – there's five different questions – and then there's a bonus question at the end, which is something related to me. But right. for each question, there's five possible hints, but I'll only reveal like one hint at a time. So if you get it right on the first hint, then you get five points. If you get it right on the second hint, you get four points. And then it keeps going like that. You know, like, you know, um, and you only get three guesses for each uh, question. So for every set of five hints, you only get three guesses. If you use all your guesses and get them wrong, you get zero points for that question. Does that right, make yeah. sense? Yeah. All right. So here's the first one. Now, this could be anything that has to do with the NBA ever. All right. All right. Um, the first question, first hint, is this former NBA player played 20 seasons of basketball in the same city? Now, you could guess here or you could, you know, move on to the next hint. And you'll keep, like, another one of your guesses. But you won't get a five-pointer on this question. I don't know who I'm thinking. You could guess, or you could hold it and maybe try to be safe. Uh, and I get three for the second guess? For the second hint? You, you get one guess after each hint. So you'll get one guess here, and then if you get it wrong, I'll read the next hint, and you could get four points. Um, if you get that right, or you could hold it right now and be safe, uh, to keep three guesses, 20 seasons of basketball in the same city. It was only 20, 20 seasons. Yes. You, you're going to move. Okay, go, go for the next one. Go for all right. All right. Next hint. Um, he did not start playing basketball until he was 15 years old. Oh, all right, next one. All right, so, so now you want the next hint? <laughs> 20 seasons. Yeah. I get three for this one? You get three guesses for each question, each set of questions. Yeah, but how many points would I get? Uh, If you guess right now, you could get four points if you get it right. And if I get another hint? 
If you get another hint, then you could get three points if you get it right. I, I'll just give me another one. Give me another hint. All right. Another hint. So now, so now, since you're in the third question, you haven't used any. You could guess after every hint. You could just throw out a guess yeah. after everyone. Um, the third hint is he is one of four NBA players to record a quadruple double, and he did it oh, both yeah. times in the same month. Is it Tim Duncan? Tim Duncan is not correct. It's not um, it is not, no. Um, all right, the fourth hint is this. You might get it after this one. He was the first overall pick in 1984. Hakeem Olajuwon. Yes, it is Hakeem Olajuwon. Yeah, 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 listen, I said 20 seasons of basketball. But he played in the NBA and then college too. You know, he played at Houston. That's quadruple double. I was thinking, I was thinking Hakeem, but I was like, it can't be Hakeem. If you, if you thought that one was hard, they're gonna get harder. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't hard. I was just, I was gonna say Kobe. Honestly, I was gonna say Kobe. <laughs> at the at the beginning. Yeah. Oh yeah, that makes that makes sense. Okay. Um. All right. So the second question. Right now you got two points total. I say the goal is to try and get ten by the end. Um. All right, so the second question, first hint, is this is a – now, this is a basketball move that was first credited in the NBA to Jack Sigma. Now, it's a basketball move. It's not a player. It's not a coach. But it's, like, a type of move. Mm. Now, you could ask for the next hint, or you could try and guess oh, here yeah. for five points. Uh, yeah, give me the next hint. All right, the next hint is – over the past decade, this move has been used four times more in the regular season and two times more in the playoffs today, as opposed to like 2011. So it's a move that's becoming more popular over time. Now you could ask for the next hint, or you could try and guess right here and maybe get four points if you get it right. <laughs> So you said it's a new move. Well, it is a basketball move, but it's becoming more popular over time. And it was credited to Jack Sigma first in the NBA. Uh, I go for number three. I go for number three. All right, number three is uh, the most recent player to hit one of these shots in a clutch time situation was Davis Bertans. So if you've been watching the NBA a lot this season, you've seen Davis Bertans hit this clutch shot using this move. So now you know it's at least an offensive move, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking offensive anyway. Now, you might as well try and guess after this because you've already used your two skips. So you could guess after each one. All right. Yeah, give me, give me, give me this. Wait, what just? No, 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 you can guess. You can guess now, yeah, after each uh, one. Any thoughts <laughs> coming to you? Davis Bertans. Uh, I, I say Jack Sigma. Is it the jab step? No, no. It is not the jab step. Uh, it's relatively close-ish, I'll say that. All right, so here's the fourth hint. Uh, Luka Doncic used this move to defeat the Clippers in game four uh, in the 2020 NBA playoffs. Remember in the bubble, that game winner he hit? What is this? It's a step back. It is the step back. Bro, he created... I, I'm not going to lie to you. I would not have thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, yeah. What, what were you surprised about like with the step back? The Jack Sigma or... Yes, Jack Sigma. I would never put those two together. That would probably be like the last thing. <laughs> yeah, he he is technically credited with the step back. He did it a different way though. He kind of like jabbed back before he shot it, but uh, yeah. he's he's technically yeah. the guy. Um, so yeah. you got four points. You're on pace for ten. So you're doing pretty good right now. All right, here's yeah. here's the third question. First hint: This NBA team was founded in 1988. The team founded in 88. So. <laughs> not Cleveland, not Cleveland. 
Cleveland. Are you, are you guessing Cleveland? Or are you no, gonna skip? Not Cleveland, not Cleveland, okay. Not Cleveland. In my head, I'm talking about. Oh. Um, yeah. Eighty-eight. I can guess right now. I got three guesses. You you can guess right now, but you only get three guesses each set of questions. But you could get five points if you get it right here. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I go. I say Minnesota Timberwolves. It is not the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, 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 That's uh, uh, actually a pretty good guess, though, because that was right around the time they came into the league. Um, but the second hint here is since 2000, this franchise has the second most finals appearances between all the NBA teams. Uh, is it Golden State? Are you guessing Golden State? Yeah. It is not Golden State. <laughs> so you've used, you've used two guesses now you only get one more guess and you have three hints available so you're gonna have to be cautious um the yeah. third hint is their current head coach also has the second most seasons with this franchise among all the current coaches with their own so you got to think of a coach that's been there for a long time Think of a team that's made a lot of finals appearances since 2000, and they joined the NBA in 1988. What are you thinking? I swear that they were here before 1988. I get three points for this. If you if you get if you get it right, yeah. If you don't, though, you'll get zero because it'll be your last guess. Damn, my last guess. Uh, it is not the Spurs, unfortunately. Unfortunately, you're going home with zero on this question. Um, let's see if you can get it, though. The fourth hint was they already have a finals appearance in this decade, the 2020s. Wait, the 2020s? Yeah. So that it narrows it down to, like, four teams. Miami? <laughs> it is Miami, yeah. Miami? Yep. Um. Because I'll, I'll tell you the one you were probably tripped up with the Warriors one, right? That was probably surprising yeah. you. They made it in 06 and then the four years with LeBron, and then you know they made it in 2020. So it's six. And I was, I knew this, weren't this version invented before that? Like, before 1998? They won one in 1999, yeah. Uh, so, but if it was one year later, they would have tied Miami here. But that, that's why I said since 2000, to make it a little bit more uh, scary. Yeah. But all right, so you need six more points to get that 10-pointer at the end. Here's the fourth question, the first hint. This NBA player went to a high school with the same name that matched its own first name. <laughs> that, that, now, this might be hard. Yeah, I can't get that. I'm not about to risk it. All right, so you want another hint? Yeah. All right. The second hint is he is the longest tenured player on the franchise he plays for. Like, of you know, the active players. Longest tenured player on his franchise. Currently. So you got to think about the people. Who have been on a team for a while, yeah. Oh, All right. Uh, third hint is... This guy was taken one selection before Julius Randle in the NBA draft. Dang, nobody else been on a team for that long? <laughs> he, he's been on his team for a while now. But pick up on Julius Randle, like, wouldn't that be like 20? Yeah, that's the hint. Mm -hmm. you, might, you might as well throw out a guess because you already used two skips on this one. Yeah, I did use two. Um... I'm thinking, I'm thinking, like, wait, who is Marcus Smart trying to do? I can guess, I can guess. You, you can guess if you want. Look, I feel like he was drafted after him, but since he's really the only person <laughs> I could think of around him, I'm going to say Marcus Smart. Is that your final answer? Yeah, I can't think of nobody that's wrong. Yeah. It is Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart is correct. Uh, 
that's a three pointer. It's pretty good. The other ones I had is he's widely known as one of the best defenders in the league, and then he hit a clutch three. He hit a clutch three pointer to force overtime on the season opener. So if you watch the Knicks Celtics game, like yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you got you got seven now. So if you get a three pointer or higher here, you'll get ten, which that's what I say is like kind of the benchmark. Um, fifth question, first hint. This player during his rookie season was a member of the Sacramento Kings. Yeah, I can't guess. I can't. You said this member was a rookie season. Rookie season. This was... player during his rookie season was a member of the Sacramento Kings. But you didn't say he was drafted by Sacramento. I did not. You didn't say that. I feel like that's the trick right there. During his rookie season, was a member of the Sacramento Kings. Uh, and that, and it could could also be other teams, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm just saying, at some point in his rookie year, he was a member of the Sacramento Kings. Do you want to yes. get the next hint, or you want to guess here? Next hint, next hint. All right, next hint is he was in the 1991 training camp for the Denver Broncos of the NFL. What, what you got to guess? <laughs> oh, no. I don't know if you... <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Bro, are you, are you trying to do this right now? I get three guesses? You get three guesses. You can guess right now if you think you know. <laughs> is it Paris McCarty? <laughs> it is. That's a four-pointer. All right, all right. I, I, I purposely put that in there. I thought you'd enjoy it. For those of you who are watching right now and you're probably like, what? Um, His yeah. dad, Paris was a part of the NBA. So I had to put that question in there. Um, and, you know, considering you were a guest today, it only made sense. So that's pretty yeah. good. You got what, 11 then after those five questions? Yeah. But that's crazy. You, <laughs> <laughs> but you could still get five more if you get this one right. This is the ultimate bonus. About you. It's about, about me. Garrett. About Garrett. Let's this is it. This is impossible level, though. You get no hints. It's just one question. All right. I don't need a hint. I don't need a hint. Sweet. Sweet. All right. So here's the question for today: Which NBA player, it could be past or present, has okay. been my iPhone wallpaper for the past seven and a half years? Is it really? Is this hard though? I think so. Yeah. It could be anybody in the history of the NBA. But, like, I don't see how it can't be Derrick Rose. It's probably not because it's hard. So, I don't know. <laughs> Hold on. That's not my guess. That's not my guess. All right, all right. Like... That's fair. Uh, If you're saying it's hard, I can't say it's Derrick Rose. I can't. I just can't if it's hard. Uh, Last seven years was your S wallpaper. Seven and a half years. Seven and a half. Seven and a half. You're right. What do you think? It could be anybody. I feel like your best bet is just throw out a random name. To be honest. Is that really your answer? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, forget it. Kobe. I don't know. All right, final answer. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, Kobe. I'll okay, okay. Kobe. It is not Kobe, unfortunately. Um, yeah. The correct answer is Alonzo Morning. Bro, I wouldn't get it. <laughs> Why would it? The, the reason it's Alonzo Morning is because on NBA 2K14, they had this My Team Mobile app. I don't know if you remember those back in the day. The yeah, the I, I played 2K. 13 was my favorite because of those challenges they had on the but mobile app. The first legendary card I pulled in uh, 2K14, My Team Mobile, Alonzo Morning. And then he's been my wallpaper since. So, yeah, that was impossible. But I feel like... These questions about me at the end are going to be, like, so hard that if anyone guesses it, it's just, like, you're insane. <laughs> um, you think you got another one in your head? Like, this don't count as my points. I just want to guess. I just want to guess one. Like, give me – like, do you have another one about yourself? Ooh. Um, I I'll give you the one that I gave my last person. Um, right, okay. Let me see. 
So, so my last episode, I asked my guests, um, what NBA player walked up to me and gave me a sour look after I asked him for a photo together. And then he just stared me in the eyes, walked away. What, what NBA player was that? Well, I'm going to assume. All right, look, so this is what I'm going to say. This is what I'm going to say. I know it was India. It was in Indiana. Right? I, I'm going to assume it's in Indiana. I'm Rel- relatively. Also... Yeah. Relative area. I'm also. Oh, wait, it wasn't at a game? No, it was it was at a game. Oh, oh yeah, so. A basketball game. So, I'm going to I think it's the Pacers. I think it was with the Pacers, but I think it's the team playing the Pacers. And <laughs> I don't think Derrick Rose would be a favorite player after he did that to you. So probably one. That's 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 a fair assessment. <laughs> and then <laughs> what are you thinking? Uh was it random player? One of your favorites? Did you say Trey Young? I never. I didn't say it was one of my favorites. Um, oh, I thought you said. I thought you said it was one of your favorites. But no, it's not Trey Young. the The answer oh, yeah. it was Glenn Big Baby Davis, um, and he did it to me. With that dude. Well, because he's know. an because he's an NBA player. He was a meme at the point. And then yeah. when I asked him for it, it was at the big three, by the way, in like Chicago. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but yeah, like that, that's my story. And I, I, I ranted on Twitter after it. It was so annoying. But uh, what were you going to say? I was going to say I went to the big three when it was here in Detroit and uh, in the, with the palace. It was the year after Allen Iverson didn't play. And I was sad about that. because I was like, if only I could see Allen Iverson. But yeah. Um, Cause you know I never got to see him play in person. Yeah, I bet that because I wasn't really watching basketball. Then. It was like what two thousand nine or some some like. And I was like, I don't know when he retired. I really do. You? He retired in like well, he didn't retire until like twenty thirteen, but he was done oh, playing yeah, after like twenty ten. Yeah. Yeah. Um. um but yeah. <laughs> yeah, Glenn, Glenn, Dave, Big Baby, and we were in like. Like, we were able to, like, get down, like, get down low. We weren't able to sit in the seats because my uncle was one of the coaches, Rick Mahorn. Oh, wow. Uh, you know, with the uh, Bulls. Like, that's, like, my god dad because, you know, him and my dad were friends, whatever. Yeah. But uh, when he went down there, like, we went down there. We were able to go down there. He was, like, just yelling and stuff. Like, he was, like, just, like, being all loud and everything. <laughs> all of that. He was being all loud and stuff. And, like, I, I don't know. I was like twelve, and after that, I just didn't like him anymore. Cause he was dang, he, he, he ruined it for you. Yeah, but um, I met I, I met Amari Stoudemire. I was really happy to see him because I liked him a lot. Uh, I met Gary Payton because my dad hit that game winner against Gary Payton's team. Oh, f- funny you said that. Uh, that was the third. That was the next hint I had on there, like for your dad. Oh I was, yeah. I was gonna say this guy defeated Gary Payton in the tournament, and then. Later on, I had, like, about that game winner he hit and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy, though. That's cool. Yeah. Um, and then I met – oh, and I met Baron Davis. I met Baron Davis. Nice. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. That, that was just a sour moment for me, and it's burned in the back of my brain. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I think that's going to do it, though, for the show today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching. Any final thoughts for you? Um, I feel like if I ever do this again, I'm definitely getting five questions each. I'm definitely getting 25. I'll tell you that right now. I'm getting 25 because I'm that confident. Well, I will say the the one that you got the highest score on was the one about your dad, which probably won't be one of the five <laughs> next time if you come back on. So it's gonna, it'll probably be even a little harder. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, but uh, And to end it off, Kobe's the goat. Don't at me. Uh, that, that's fair. That's fair. Um, <laughs> in my opinion, MJ's the goat, but we go our separate we'll ways. About, we'll talk about that after, man. All right, all right. Fine. Fine. We'll have a long discussion after I end the recording. But anyways, 
Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching, and we're out. Peace. Peace.